Hello and welcome to Space Shark Teaches. I'm Sean from Space Shark Studios and I'm here to teach you visual scripting in Godot 3.1. Let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to be covering how to make platforms move and slide back and forth so that you can make your level um, a little more interesting than it is right now. So to start with, we are going to add a kinematic body and we are going to name this moving platform so kinematic re remember means that it does not have gravity force on it but it's also not static because we don't want a static body it is going to move after we've added our moving platform we're going to go ahead and save it as a scene like normal then go in and add our normal parts. So let's add an animated sprite and go ahead and make some new sprite frames for this. Now we are actually going to be using some new sprites made just for the moving platform. That way things don't get all weird and we have different sprites that look the same but some of them move. It's just not good practice. So we go ahead and we add in our two sprites and then you can see they're blurry because we forgot to import them as pixel. So once we have reset them you can see they start clearing up and they are ready for us to start animating. I'm gonna animate these slowly, so one frame a second. And then I'm going to stretch it out to the correct size and control D to duplicate it a couple of times in either direction. And if you actually look at our other sprites, let's make sure we're kind of keeping with the same keeping with the same sizing because we don't want some of our platforms to be really thick and some really thin. That can look kind of weird. So now that we have this, we have to go and add a collision shape. Make sure that that is a rectangle and then stretch it out to the correct size. Now we can go ahead, select all our sprites, and just click on one and shift click and it'll select all of them in between click playing and there we go we now have our moving platform all nice and set up we can go ahead and drag this over here so that we can watch when it starts going so we now have a new looking platform all right so that's all ready so now we need to add our script so remember to put your script in the scripts folder and once we've made it we are going to start adding some variables so the first one is going to be called move speed it is going to be a float and let's start this at 2 set that to export next is going to be got ahead of myself move distance and it is going to be a float and let's just set that oh well, let's actually set it up to something like 100 because this will be in pixels and then set export to true after that we are going to have move direction and this will be the direction that our platform moves so either like that or back and forth up and down um, this makes it really easy for us to be able to alter this anytime we want so let's have this move at an angle for right now and set this to export as well and then finally we have time since init and this will be the time that has passed since the platform was first initialized and we are not going to export that so next over in functions click on the little box here 
and pull in physics process. And now we are going to be using some math to control this platform so it moves left and right correctly. And we are actually going to be using sine. So what sine does is as time progresses this way, it goes up and then down and then gets back to here at pi time. So after pi amount of time, that's what the symbol means, so 3.14, it has gone from zero up to one, back to zero, down to negative one, and back to zero again. So it's completed one cycle, kind of going over and back and then to the origin again. So if we take the speed, then it's going to speed things up. So it'll go back and forth and back and forth faster depending on our speed. And then the move distance is how far it goes back and forth. And this is this height here. So you'll see what I mean when we put this all together. So first off, we need to take this time since init, multiply it by delta, which means the time since the last time this function ran. And we are going to control drag the time since init so we can set it to this new value. Now after that is when it gets a little bit more confusing and we have to go back to our function here. So we're going to take speed, multiply it times pi, multiply it by our time since init, and then multiply it by our move direction. So is take our speed, multiply it by, over in available nodes, you drag in the math constant and do the drop down to pi. So multiply it with pi, take that, multiply it by the time since init that we just set, and then multiply it by the move distance. So now we have speed times pi times time sense times the move distance. And we can take all of that and multiply that by the move direction. So what this will do is say, all right, um, here's the direction I'm going. Here is how far along that path I have gone or I should be going and where I should exist at this point in time. So at this point in time, we now have the offset, the distance that we want to move from the origin, but there's no good way to actually do that. So what we need to do is actually get the origin point by making origin, float, and then don't set it to export. And we are going to use ready to set this point. So we take the origin and we set it to, actually an easier way to do this would be click on moving platform and then drag in position. And instead of dragging it in, control drag in to get it. So now we have our origin position. And then in process, we can say, we want to move to the origin position plus this new offset. We're going to add these two together 
and then set this new position and that will slide us to this next place. Well, it won't actually slide, it'll teleport, but because we're moving at 60 frames a second, it will look like we're sliding. And I just messed up because we're not getting the position, we're actually getting the origin. So once we have the origin, we add the origin plus our new offset and set that as our position. And now, because we're moving it real slow, which we need to change. So move this back up from 0.1, or actually let's just increase this. See if we can see the difference. So now it's moving really slowly. We can play around with these numbers until we get something that we like. So this is moving a lot more. So if we do something like, let's do 500 and make it move left to right, we can actually go down to a really low amount and it'll still be moving fast but that's because the move distance is so high. So our move speed and our move distance are affecting each other. As you can see, we can kind of just sit on our platform and our character slides a little around, but that is because we're kinematic or kinematic for both of these. And so the physics are gonna act a little bit weird on both. But there we have it. We have a sliding platform now and you can make whatever changes you want. So let's do negative one, so it goes up and down. And now we have a little escalator elevator that moves very, very quickly. Let's see if we're in the right spot and whoop, up we go. So this also shows how important it is to make sure and have the correct speeds and the correct angles because the physics does not really like being pushed up like that. But that is it. So you're adding an offset here to the origin, setting that as the position, and we're good. So in the next lesson, we will be talking about how to collect coins in the environment, as well as moving on to creating our UI after that. So I'll see you then. Thank you for watching Space Shark Teaches. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and remember to click the bell to always stay up to date. Please also join us on our Discord, linked in the comments, and check out our other videos if you ever want to see what else we've been up to. Thanks again for watching, and we can't wait to see what you make.